If you have any vintage PCs or graphics cards from the mid-1990s or earlier, you may have noticed something about their video output connector that can make them difficult to connect to a more modern display. And that is the VGA output connector may be missing one of the pin sockets. So right there, it's pin 9. And on some older VGA graphics cards and computers with built-in VGA graphics, where that pin goes may be blocked off. If you have a period-appropriate monitor to go with that computer, that's not a problem because their VGA connector is missing that pin 9, as well as two other pins in this case. So you can just plug it in and it works. But any monitors or video cables made since about the mid-1990s are likely to have all the pins present which means if you try to plug this into a graphics card that has that blocked off pin socket it's not going to fit. When IBM invented the VGA graphics standard and introduced it with their PS2 series of computers in 1987 they gave it that high density 15 pin video connector even though they didn't need all of those 15 pins but with the development of plug and play in the mid 1990s that previously unused pin 9 on the VGA connector is now used for a 5 volt DC power output to power an EEPROM chip in your monitor so that the computer can identify which make and model it is even if the monitor is not turned on. But to solve this problem of trying to use an older graphics card which has that pin blocked off with a newer monitor whose cable has all the pins present there's a couple different ways you could solve the problem. One is you could try to remove that pin from this video connector, or if it's removable, you could swap out the video cable to the monitor for an older one which does not have that pin present, like this one. But that's not a good idea because then you would lose that ability for a newer graphics card to identify the monitor even when it's not turned on. So I think the best solution is the one I'm going to do in this video, and that is to punch out this hole allowing the connector to fit. The only two tools you'll need to perform this modification are a lighter and a large size paper clip. Just make sure you get plain paper clips and not the candy coated ones. Now you just have to unfold the paper clip. And I'm sure you've already figured it out, but we're going to use the heat from the flame to heat up the tip of the paper clip. And then we're going to use it to melt the hole in the VGA connector to create that pin socket for the missing pin 9. Actually, I'm going to use a candle because I don't want to waste my lighter fluid. And there is the XGA2 card mounted in a vise because we'll need to apply some pressure to melt that hole. So it's good to have something to hold it. And likewise, you'll need something to hold the paper clip because obviously it's going to get hot and you don't want to burn your fingers. So I'm going to use the candle to heat up the tip of the paper clip. The very tip of the flame is the hottest part, so that's what you want to aim for. It does take a while. I'm sure you could use some other method of heating up the paper clip, like a soldering iron, but this is what I'm using. Okay, let's see if that's good enough to melt the hole. It may take several tries. Because we used the candle flame, it has some soot on it, so I'm just going to clean this and see the result of our work. I think you can see we now have a hole there where there was none before. So the test will be to get a VGA connector with all the pins on it and see if it fits. Here's our modern VGA connector with all the pins on it and let's see. Yep, fits right on. You can even screw on the retaining screws. So that was a successful, easy modification. Just heat up a paper clip with a candle or a lighter or whatever you want to use and melt the hole 
and the connector. There's a closer look at the finished product and I'd say that's pretty darn good. Now I just need to put this XGA2 card back in the PS2 and see how it works. First I'm just testing it with the original IBM CRT monitor. Right now it's running Windows for Workgroups 3.11. If we go into the control panel for the XGA card, this monitor is limited to 640 by 480 at 60 hertz. There, 60.1 hertz non-interlaced. But I can bump it up to 64,000 colors, although I don't really have any need for that, so I just leave it on 256. But now with that modified VGA connector, I can use a modern flat panel LCD monitor and get much higher resolutions and refresh rates. Now I have it connected to a 19 inch 1280 by 1024 resolution LCD monitor. I chose a custom display with the biggest size they offered in the list, 21 inches. And now we have a much greater array of resolutions to choose from. Still the standard 640 by 480 at 60 hertz, which is what we're using right now. We could bump it up all the way to 75 hertz now, although with a LCD there's really not that much benefit to those higher refresh rates and you won't be able to see it on this video anyway so I won't bother going above 60 Hertz but we can try 800 by 600 at 60 Hertz non interlaced we could still do 64,000 colors at that resolution but again I'll just choose 256 and I'll have to restart Windows so I'll be back in a second at 800 by 600 resolution here we are at 800 by 600. Maybe you can see that the size of the windows and text got smaller because of the greater resolution. But we'll still try higher here. 1024 by 768. Again, we can go all the way up to 75 hertz, but I'll choose 60 hertz. This resolution, we're limited to 256 colors, but like I said, that's still plenty for Windows 3.1. And again, we'll have to restart. Now we're at 1024 by 768 and the first thing I notice is that this resolution it switched to the large fonts which are much less pixelated looking so there it is 1024 by 768 256 colors large fonts we can even do extra large fonts and we can go only up to 75 Hertz although with this LCD monitor you wouldn't notice it the next resolution on the list is very non-standard 1104 by 828 never heard of that and then interestingly it supports a true 4 by 3 aspect ratio of 1280 by 960 instead of the more common 1280 by 1024 which is the next on the list but this monitor is natively 1280 by 1024 so that's what I'll try although we're limited to only 16 colors and it's only interlaced at this high resolution so I don't know how well this monitor will support the interlaced video but I'll give it a try uh oh, it doesn't like that. Input signal out of range. Change settings to 1280 by 1024, which is what we're using, but 60 hertz. I think it's seeing that interlaced video at twice the actual refresh rate, so it was like 44 hertz interlaced, which is 88 hertz if you count both fields. So that's why this monitor is not playing nice with it. It sees it's above 60 hertz and it just doesn't want to display it. And there's no 15 second timeout with this version of Windows so I'll just need to blindly exit out and then run setup from DOS to get back to a standard VGA driver and start back at a lower resolution. Okay, so the way you get out of Windows 3.1 without seeing the screen is you press Alt F4 and then hit Enter and I'll get you back to DOS. So now we can go to the Windows directory and run setup from DOS and let's see what our options are here. See there's the XGA 2.12 driver but it doesn't specify a resolution so I'll just set it to standard VGA. And now if I start Windows it should work fine. Now I'm back to standard VGA, so if I go into this XGA setup, it just says it requires you to use the XGA driver. So now I exit out of that, I go to Windows Setup from within Windows, and hopefully if I change it back to XGA, it'll default back to 640 by 480 instead of trying to use that too high of a resolution for this monitor. 
Nope, it just went back to that 1280 by 1024 at that interlaced frequency, which this monitor doesn't like. You're kind of stuck here unless I go into the system INI file and try to change the settings manually. Just as I suspected, it's in the system.ini file under the category XGA display. You can see Hor pixel and ver pixel. So I'll change that to 640 and 480. Ver frequency 44.7 was that interlaced frequency it didn't like. So I think it said 60.1. So I'll do 601 and hopefully that will work. So yep, just like I specified manually in that file, we're at 640 by 480, 60.1 hertz non-interlaced. Although I can bump it up to 256 colors, so I can do that. Actually, I didn't notice it selected the large fonts even at 640 by 480, so everything is rather comically large on the screen now, so I'll need to set that back to small fonts 256 colors at 60 hertz 640 by 480 and restart once again and just to prove that we're getting our money's worth here is a 256 color image using the xga2 card in windows 3.1 but not for long because i'm going to be putting something different on this machine soon Something that, according to IBM, was a better DOS than DOS and a better Windows than Windows. OS2 Warp version 3. Anybody got the DOS 6 out there? Okay, most people tell me out of DOS 6 they're getting 620, 630K, which is pretty darn good, and they're happy. But then they load in their land drivers, and then they load in their mouse drivers, and their other TSRs and stuff, and it takes it down. I have all my land drivers loaded. I have all my drivers loaded out of 640K here. What I'm doing is I shell out a word perfect in this box. Out of 640K, I have 753. Not bad out of 640, huh? Not bad. One of the PC magazines said we blew it because we didn't give the capability of doing Alt-Control-Delete to get rid of a bad DOS session. No, I'm sorry. We came up with a new concept. It's called a menu. You select close. It says, are you sure? And it says, yes. 